God bless you this morning, and we want to welcome you once again to our service here online, and you that are here, we want to welcome you on today. Truly, God has been so good, and he has brought us from a mighty long way. Thank God for all that he's doing. Thank God for my wife and how he's blessed her. Thank God for my children and especially for the All Nations family. Truly, you have been faithful and we praise God for you. You that are listening in this morning, you that have taken the time just to tune in, I want you to know how much we appreciate you for tuning in on this morning. I want to thank you also for how you, so many of you have supported the ministry this past year. Oh, bless his name. And I can assure you that God got a blessing in store just for you. This morning, I want you to look with me into the word of God and listen. I need some likes and some and some hearts, even this morning. Let me know, amen, that you are enjoying this. And amen, sometimes what you say on Facebook, it means touching somebody else. So let's go to the God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, here we are. We're looking to you for guidance this morning because you know God was needed. And Father, I pray that you would anoint these lips of clay, that you would speak through me, use me. Oh God, not for my glory, but for your glory. I realize without you, God, I can do nothing. So even now, speak, God. Speak to somebody. Touch somebody. God, we ask it in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. Listen, call a neighbor, call a friend. Tell them to tune in right now. Amen. And this morning, if you would, go with me to St. John, the ninth chapter. Beginning at verse number one. And it reads, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God may, should be made manifest in him. And I want to ask you a question this morning. And the question is this. What is your purpose in life. What is your purpose in life? Why are we, why are you and I here on the earth? Just why? And we find our purpose in life written in the Bible. And when we looked at our scripture this morning, uh, we'll see that every last one of us, all of us, we are born for a purpose. And not only that, but from the scripture, I see that we all are born blind to our purpose. 
Whether you know it or not, it's going to take a miracle. Come on. I take a miracle of God in order for us to see our purpose. And so now, I see the purpose for which we were all born. And that purpose is so that the work of God may be displayed in our life. Listen, listen, listen. It's not about you getting the glory. It's all about God getting the glory. So I see that we all, every last one of us, are born for purpose. Jesus traveled with his disciples along the road they came across a certain man. Now, 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 listen. This man didn't have a name. This, he just said, a certain man. That certain man can be you. Now, the scripture tells us that the disciples immediately saw that the man was born with a problem. And how many of y'all know? Every last one of us, we were born with a problem. And the Bible tells us that the disciples saw that this certain man's problem was that he was blind from birth. That's what they saw. How I many you know it's amazing how people see you? Hmm? It's amazing how when people look at you, they can see all the negative stuff. But Jesus have a saw that this man was also born with something else. You know, I, I, I thank God that God don't see us like we see us. When the disciples they only saw a man born with a problem. But Jesus saw a man born with purpose. I say with purpose. Let me, let, let, let me say this. If, if, if I was to put a, a, a subject to this, the subject would be born for a purpose. Born for a purpose. Now Jesus saw a man born with a purpose. And, 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 and the reason for this man, for this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. I, 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 I think about this and Jesus and his disciples were both looking at the same man but they saw that man two completely different ways. Look at, you know what? When people look at you how do they see you? What do they see in you? And many, many times, they see all the, 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 the negative stuff. Come on. The disciples, 
They saw a man who was born with a problem. As I said before, we were all born with a problem. But Jesus saw a man who was born with a purpose. And the purpose that he was born was that the work of God may be displayed in his life. So now, how do we apply this? This, 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 this begs the question, what do you see or what do we see in our own lives? Come on. Do we see our problems? Or do we see our purpose? Some of you right now, you might say, but I have really big problems. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> look like your problems are insurmountable. Hmm? I mean, things are crowding in on you so bad. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Yes, you have problems. I have problems too. I must admit that. God wants you to know something today. And what he wants you to know is that your problems may be big, but your purpose, oh, bless the name, is bigger. Did you hear what I said? Come on. Your purpose is always bigger than your problem. You ought to clap your hands on that right there. You ought to shout on that right there. Come on. See, your problems are temporary, but your purpose is eternal. So, look, some of you right now, you might be saying, when I look, at my life, I can only see my problems. Come on. But today, God wants you to leave here also seeing your purpose. As I told you before, I don't care how you came into this world. It might have come through incest, rape, or whatever. You were born for a purpose. Come on. And the truth of the matter is that God formed you for his purpose. Every last one of us were created by God. And you were created for God. Oh, God. So God says to us to let your purpose define who you are. You know, uh, uh, sometimes I look back over my life and, and if the truth be known, I'm not even supposed to be here right now.
before, before. Let me tell you, let me say this. The enemy looks up the road and he sees you with purpose. So it's his aim to destroy you before you can realize why you're here. When I was, my mother was carrying me. She worked in a store. And they had a gas stove, and the gas stove, there was an explosion. And the door from the stove hit her in her stomach. That in itself was supposed to take me out. But God. Then, as time went on, and as I got to be a young boy, another thing happened. And that was designed to kill me. But God, all I'm trying to tell you is this, that you have purpose. Come on. God gave each one of us, he gave us all a promise long before we were born. He says, look at what he says now. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. He said, plans to prosper you and to give you a hope and a future. Listen, I want you to know you are born for a purpose. Oh, bless God. And even though we're all born for a purpose, I see in John 9 some bad news. Every last one of us are born blind to our purpose. You and I are the blind man in John 9. Now, now, when I say you and I are the blind man in John 9, I'm not saying that uh, like him, we're all born blind physically. But I am saying we were like him. We were all born blind spiritually. Is there a difference? See, you can't see your purpose in life with physical eyes. You're going to see your purpose in life through spiritual eyes. We have a perfect example of this in the story. I want you to consider two different ways the disciples and Jesus looked at the blind man. The disciples looked at the man born blind through their physical eyes, where they saw him. And because they looked at the man born blind with their physical eyes, they couldn't see his purpose. They're going to see the problem. And that's where a lot of people are today. But Jesus, oh, bless God, although they had looked at the man born blind through spiritual eyes, and because Jesus looked at the man born blind through spiritual eyes, 
He could instantly see the blind man's purpose. Listen, you have purpose. Lord, I somebody ought to clap your hands right here. You can only see your purpose in life if your spiritual eyes are open. And that's one reason why the Bible says you must be born again. Only, listen, only when you're born again by the Spirit of God can your spiritual eyes be open. Somebody say, I once was blind. Hallelujah. But now I see. Oh, my God, I, 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 I can testify to that. One day, one day, I was blind one day. But then Jesus came into my life, opened my eyes that I could see. So now, everyone is born for a purpose. Everyone is born blind to that purpose. Then, listen, it's, it must be true. It's going to take a miracle. I said it's going to take a miracle of God in order for you to see your purpose. And without a miracle, from God, our natural tendency may be to react just like the disciples did. They want to play the blame game. The first thing they said to Jesus was, who sinned? This man or his parents, that he was born blind. And they immediately looked for someone to blame, just like it is today. It was this man who sinned. Or was it the parents who sinned because there's no other reason why he was born blind? I want you to notice the blame game got stopped fairly quickly by Jesus. Jesus said, neither this man nor his parents sinned. And Jesus said, but this happened so the work of God may be displayed in his life. Oh, bless his name. You see, while the disciples were only interested in fixing the blame, God was only interested in fixing the person. Oh, bless God. And when you are tired, of playing the blame game. God ha, has a miracle just for you. You may, you, 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 you might, you may think that your problem is bigger than your purpose. But God doesn't think so. For every mess, God has a miracle. For every sin, God has a Savior. And that Savior is none other than Jesus Christ. Huh, God? Huh? You might say it takes a miracle. But I want to let you know today that God specializes. I said God specializes. Huh? He specializes in miracles. Uh, somebody said, I can't see my life having purpose. But God can. Some of you saying, but... I'm too old to change. Maybe the blind man was your age or even older. So much I can't forget all the mistakes I made. But God says, I can. Some of you say, I can't see the purpose for which you created me. But God says, I can. Oh, bless his name. And finally, we come to the fourth truth in our passage. The purpose for which we were born is that the work of God may be displayed in our life. That's why you were born. 
so God can display his work in your life. Oh, bless God. He wants us to be a trophy of his grace. There are four responses we can have to our purpose. Number one, I don't want God to display his work through me. Here is the truth. You are blind and you don't even know it. You would rather have a problem than God's purpose. Number two, first let me fix my problems. Then God can display his work through me. If you, if you fix all your problems, which you never will, how God is able to display his work through you is not the it's not the righteous who need a doctor, but the sick. Come on. Oh, my God. I'm going I'm I'm to close this out. Number three, you might say, my problem to be for God to display his work through me. But God specializes in big problems. The harder, the better. Nothing is impossible with God. Did you hear what I say? The last response. All you got to say, yes, God. I want you to display your work through me. Yes, God. God, I surrender to you. Any way, God, you want to use me. I'm yours, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody right now, somebody right now. I, I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody right now, you have purpose, but the enemy is coming in trying to cloud it up and so you can't see your purpose. But I'm letting you know today that Jesus loves you. God cares about you and he wants to use you this day to reach somebody else. Come on, somebody. I'm I, I, I just going to stop. I'm going to pray. I want to pray. Because somebody right now, all you got to do just come to him right now. You can't change yourself, but come just as you are and acknowledge, God, I need you to help me that I might see the purpose for which I'm here for. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for you see us differently than we man see. Man sees us with problems, but you see us with purpose. Touch that man, touch that woman now. God, that are blind, spiritually blind, touch him, oh God. Oh God, that their eyes might come open, that they might accept you as their Savior, that they might be used for your glory and for your honor. God, touch right now. God, I ask it in the name of Jesus. And God, I claim it, and I thank you for doing it. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. You were born for a purpose. All you got to do is just surrender. And say, yes, God. Lord, I surrender. Use me for your glory, for your honor. Oh, my God. God bless you today. God keep you. Be encouraged. And know. Yes, you have a problem, but God is bigger than your problem. He has ordained purpose in your life. I'm praying for you, and we love you. God bless you. Thank you for joining our online service. We hope that you will do four things for us. Number one, like, share this Facebook page, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Number two, join us on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern and Wednesday at 6 p.m. on our social media. And number three, partner with us by giving on Givelify or Cash App. And number four, most importantly, prayer. Partner with us in prayer. We realize we're living in challenging times. We must be about our Father's business. Our goal 
is to encourage, equip, and train you to be all that God has purposed for you to be and to make disciples. We would love you to join our church family. God is resetting, revamping, and restructuring all nations. And we want you to be in step with what God is doing now. Pray for us, and we are praying for you. We love you.